Okay. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to our second lecture on BC 106, Interpreting Scripture. We're just um, talking about interpreting prophetic scriptures and just giving some pointers on how to interpret prophetic scriptures. Um, so let's pick up at point number eight, which uh, we share the PDF. Okay. So another important thing with prophetic scriptures is to keep in mind that there are certain prophecies, Old Testament prophecies, which have a dual fulfillment in the sense, this is point number eight, in the sense of a spiritual fulfillment in the church and a literal fulfillment in Israel. So although the prophet in the Old Testament who is prophesying is speaking to Israel, that prophecy is fulfilled first in the church. And it will be fulfilled literally in Israel. So some examples would be Joel chapter 2. Joel is prophesying, it shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Now he's speaking to Israel. He's not speaking to the church. He's prophesying to Israel as a nation. But when the church is born on the day of Pentecost, Peter stands up with reference to the church and he is saying, this is that which was spoken by Joel. Or, this is that which was spoken. So Joel prophesied, the church is birthed and Peter is saying, it's happening here. Now, But we know that, so that's a spiritual fulfillment. So we refer to that, okay, that's a spiritual fulfillment. And that continues to happen today in the church. And so when we are preaching all over the world, you know, all the Gentiles, like wherever, they say, oh, God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Now, how can we say that? Uh, it's applying to us because Peter, by the Holy Spirit, said, what Joel prophesied is for us today. Yeah. And, and Peter went on in that sermon. He said, this promise is to you. It's to your children. It's to all who are far away. It's to as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts 2, 38, 39. So basically he's saying Joel's prophecy is for everybody. As many as the Lord our God will call. That means it's being fulfilled spiritually in the church right now. But... At that time, he was speaking to Israel, and it will be truly fulfilled in Israel. You read about that in Zechariah 12, verse 10. And the Christ comes during the tribulation, at the end of the tribulation, when Jesus is coming back, Zechariah 12, 10, God says, I will pour out my spirit of grace and supplication on the house of Israel. And they who pierced him will see him meaning the house of people of Israel. And they, they pierced him, right? They will see him. God says, I will pour my spirit on all of them. So it will be literally fulfilled during the tribulation with the people of Israel. But it is first. it was first fulfilled spiritually by the church. You understood? Also very interesting is that in Joel's prophecy, he spoke about your young men will see visions, your old men will dream. Acts chapter 2, 
Did anybody have a vision? Did anybody have a dream? Acts chapter 2, in the upper room. 120 were there. What happened? There was a sound of a rushing mighty wind. They were tongue fire. They spoke with tongues. No vision, no prophecy, no dream. Joel said, I'll pour out my spirit. The young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Apple, orange, banana, here, tomato, onion, potato. And Peter is saying, this is... He's comparing. He's saying, this is the same. It's Peter. No. Apple, orange, banana is not the same as onion, tomato, potato. Different. But Peter, by the Holy Spirit, is saying, this is that. Point is, when the Holy Spirit moves, when the Holy Spirit is poured out, there will be different manifestations. Right? That's the point. Right? Yes, Joel said, visions, dreams, prophecy. That didn't happen on the day of Pentecost. There were the sound of from heaven, tongues of fire, people speaking in tongues. It was not the same thing. Literally, exactly the same thing. But it was the same Holy Spirit moving. Different manifestations. And we see that throughout in the, in, the, in, the, in the revivals of the church. Same Holy Spirit is moving, but the manifestations are different. It's okay. Holy Spirit is moving. Just the expressions may be different. Okay. So just keep that in mind. That's a side note. So another example of uh, spiritual fulfillment of the church is Amos prophesied. Amos chapter 9. I think it's verse 11 through 13. Amos prophesied. He said, Amos said, God is saying, in the last days, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David. And the Gentiles, the sons of Edom, the Gentiles will come seeking God. And The sower will overtake the reaper. This is Amos chapter 9, 11 through 13. The sower will overtake the reaper. So what Amos said, in the last days, I will build again the tabernacle of David. The Gentiles will come seeking God. The harvest will be so great, sower will overtake the reaper. How do you say it in Hindi? Bojne vala, katne vala ko. Something like that. Bone wala. Katnewa. So the uh, so the sower will overtake the reaper. What does that mean? The harvest will be so much, they'll be reaping, reaping, reaping. They can't finish. But the sower will come, hey, I'm ready to sow. So the sower is overtaking the reaper. That means the harvest is so much, they have not been able to bring the harvest in. And the sower is coming back and saying, I'm ready to sow more seeds. So that is a picture of big harvest. Sower overtaking the reaper. What was that word again? Bo, bone wala, khatne wale se, chitra. Okay. Sower will overtake the reaper. So Amos said that. God will rebuild the tabernacle of David. What will happen? The Gentiles will come seeking God, and Sova will overtake the reaper. Amos said that. Then in Acts chapter 15, James, uh, who was the leader of the church in Jerusalem at that time, Acts 15, verse 15, James is standing up and saying, Oh, what we are seeing happen now is what Amos prophesied. This is in Acts 15. 
okay there is no tabernacle of david no physical tabernacle that means no physical temple so tabernacle of david basically david built the tabernacle a tent place where people are worshiping the lord all the time the worship went on for 30 33 years so god says i will bring that tabernacle back i'll build that bring back that basically the temple and then then solomon built the temple where worship continued but when james was speaking in acts 15 verse 15 there was no temple there was no tabernacle but he is saying as the prophet spoke it's happening now that means he's saying what we we are who was there the church the church was a fulfillment a spiritual fulfillment of amos chapter 9 11 to 30. church is a spiritual fulfillment that means the church is seeing the fulfillment of the gentiles coming in and when the worship is restored in the church the church is worshiping jesus then these two things will happen gentiles will come and the harvest will uh, be so great that we won't be able to reap finish or gathering all the harvest it will be so great but the same prophecy amos's prophecy amos 9 11 to 13 will also be literally fulfilled in israel they will have a temple that will be rebuilt where they will be worshiping god that will literally happen but it is spiritually being fulfilled in the church today you understood okay so that is another thing to keep in mind about certain prophecies given in the old testament that have that are having a spiritual fulfillment in the church but it will still be literally fulfilled by israel both will happen okay uh, you will see i give we just given two examples but just a few more things point number nine is uh there are uh, certain prophecies we have to keep in mind have dual fulfillment that is an immediate and a future so example in genesis 3 15 the lord spoke to the serpent serpent from now on you will crawl on your belly which means maybe he was moving around in a different way i don't know <laughs> but now as you crawl on your belly and there will be enmity between you know people and the snake you yeah? you will hurt their heel but they will crush your head so that is literal today till today it's going on you know we crush we when we see the any serpent where you will hit it you'll try to hit it on the head not the tail because you, know? you know that's the part if you hit the head it finishes so that is literal but there is a spiritual significance talking about jesus who will crush the head of the serpent? Jesus was born of this as a seed of the woman who will crush the head of the serpent. So there is a dual fulfillment, right? The immediate, which was natural, and the one that was out in the future was Jesus would come and he would crush the head of the serpent, the devil. Serpent. So that's an example for dual fulfillment. So you'll find. Uh, other examples of of such things. Um, so in prophecy, yeah, uh, look for prophecies that are you know maybe sometimes part has already been fulfilled and part will be yet to be fulfilled. So distinguish the two. Right? Okay, this has already happened. This is going to happen. For example, in Joel chapter two, in 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 one prophecy, Joel said. It will come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Uh, your, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And uh, uh, your old men will dream dreams. Upon my servants and my handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit. And the sun shall be darkened and the moon will be turned to blood red. That part is not yet fulfilled. Right? So in that one prophecy, one part is already fulfilled in the church. But the other part, about the sun being dark and the moon being turned blood red, that's going to happen in the millennium, uh, in the in the tribulation. We read about in Revelation six and eight two times in two judgments that will happen. 
Okay, so that is going to happen, whereas one part has already been fulfilled. Right. So just keep these few things in mind uh, as we go about interpreting uh, prophetic scripture. Uh, we will study uh, uh, Daniel and Revelation in detail uh, in in the third year. Any questions before we change chapter? Yes, Brent. Sorry, some prophecies are? Some prophecies have been fulfilled, the others have not been fulfilled. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Some prophecies have been fulfilled, some have not been fulfilled. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, uh, relating to all the prophetic books, so, um, so would you say that those uh, prophetic books, like, I mean, a few parts here and there talks about Jesus, or uh, it's relating to revelations and all that, but the others, like, is it going to be fulfilled? All of it, all the prophetic books, are their prophecies going to be fulfilled? Okay, uh, th your question is, um, have all the prophecies been fulfilled? Is that what your question is? Or are a lot, a lot? Okay. You mentioned like uh, some have been fulfilled, some have not been yet. Yes. So are all the others going to be fulfilled? Yes. So a um, large number of prophecies in the Bible have already been fulfilled. I think like somebody counted them. I don't know what the number is, but like over 10,000 some prophecies, fulfilled prophecies. That's why the Bible is such a reliable prophetic book. You know, so I mean, uh, especially example, the book of Daniel. It is so amazing that people doubt the book of Daniel. They say, how can a man prophesy like this? You know, so they question it. But for example, Daniel was, uh, in the time, he was serving in the Babylonian Empire. And when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream, God was showing him the next four world empires. He was showing him uh, the, that the Medes will come take over, then the Persians, then the Greeks, and then there will be another empire coming in. You know, And then after that, there will be another uh, uh, time when the Roman Empire, will, what was the former Roman Empire, but the iron and the clay will mix and there will be ten toes, ten leaders, and in out of that will come uh, 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 God will establish his kingdom. So Daniel was at that time in the Babylonian Empire and he was foretelling, of course God was showing him, all these world empires are the empires that were going to come. And everything, I mean not everything, a lot of that happened, meaning the Medes came into power. So Daniel was there. He was serving under the Medes. Then the Persians came into power. Daniel was serving under the Persians. So he served under the Babylonians, the Medes, and the Persians. But he also foretold Greeks will come next, which happened. He was not there to see it. But his, now looking back in history, we can say, yeah, Greeks came. He, prof, he foretold about Alexander the Great. He foretold about how his kingdom will be broken into four, four parts. That happened exactly. And then he talked about the coming of Christ, the Messiah. and all. So when people look at the prophecies of Daniel, they say, how could one man say all these things? Can't be, you know, because it was so accurate. So, and he was speaking centuries ahead of time. You know? So the point to answer your question, I'm, I'm saying all kinds of things, but to answer your question, yes, many prophecies of the Bible, majority of the prophecies of the Bible are fulfilled. What is left are the things concerning the end times and things out in the future, the millennium and all of that. But we can be so sure that those will be fulfilled because of all the other prophecies that have already been fulfilled. What is your question? What's your question? Okay, any other questions? Let me see online. If any of our online students have questions. Any questions from the online students? Okay. All right, so if there are no questions, we're going to go to the next chapter.
let's go to next. Um, I haven't put this PDF on the classwork. I'll do it later today after the third lecture. I'll just share. I'll do that. So I'm sorry. It's not there yet. I will upload it. Um, lesson number 12. So in this lesson, we want to talk briefly about the Old Testament in the New Testament. So what we do know is the New Testament looks back at, Old Testament, at the Old Testament scriptures. A lot of the Old Testament scriptures is explained or referenced for us in the New Testament. So it's connected. And I like how you know, somebody put it, the New Testament is in the new is in the old concealed, the old is in the new revealed. That means the New Testament is hidden in the Old Testament, and the whole testament is explained in the New Testament. Okay? The new is in the old concealed, the old is in the new revealed. Right? So they're very closely connected, Old and New Testament. So as we are reading the New Testament from the Gospels, on. There will be references back to the Old Testament. Example, right in the birth of Jesus, it says, oh, this happened. So when they, uh, when they, uh, when Joseph and Mary took baby Jesus to Egypt, then the right gospel writer says, for out of Egypt I have called my son. So he's quoting from Old Testament. Right? Then, oh, Bethlehem, you know, Ephrata, Bethlehem, out of you will come him who is to be the ruler of the nation. So it's right from the beginning of the Gospels, there are references to the quotations from the Old Testament. So basically, uh, unlike that, I mean, just give, the, give the voice. In the Gospels, even in the ministry of the Lord Jesus, when he is preaching, he quotes from the Old Testament. That's what they had in those days. So he's quoting from the Old Testament. He quotes from them. He points to examples in the Old Testament. After his resurrection, when he is walking with his disciples, he takes them through the Old Testament point and mentioning the, all the scriptures that were pointing to him. You know, so he says, see, all the Old Testament scriptures were pointing to, to, to himself, to Jesus. So even the Lord Jesus referenced it. Now Paul in his writings, in his epistles, especially in Romans, he references the Old Testament a lot, and he quotes from the Old Testament, Romans, uh, in other scriptures, in Galatians, he quotes from the Old Testament. The writer of Hebrews quotes a lot from the Old Testament. Peter quotes from the Old Testament. Right? So, in many of the right, in, in many of the right books of the New Testament, referencing the Old. Okay, so. Why are these quotations, and how are these quotations used, and how should we, uh, you know, make use of them? Now, in some in some cases, they, we are not sure of the exact location of um, uh, the quotation. Uh, it's maybe a, a a reference, meaning it's not a word for word quotation, but it's like saying, okay, like some, somebody says, you know. And nowadays, when you hear people saying, they'll just say, the, Bi the Bible says, and they will say something. They may not be quoting word for word, an exact verse, but they're giving an essence of what the Bible says. <laughs> or what the Bible says. Right? So in that sense, we can understand. And one example is in John 7, where Jesus says, As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living. What John 7, 38. So there's, there, we can't point to an exact word-for-word -word reference in the Old Testament, 
But we can say, well, like Isaiah said, he was thirsty, let him come to me and drink, you know. So that could be the context in which Jesus is mentioning this. Okay, so we may find a couple of those, those kinds of incidents. But most of them you could always point and say, okay, he's quoting from here. So there are several reasons why we have these quotations. And we've just mentioned these reasons here. Uh, to show that an Old Testament prophecy was fulfilled. So you'll find, okay, this happened so that what that prophet said was fulfilled. So it's showing you its a fulfillment. Um, the, or to show us that what is being done in the New Testament is actually agreeing with what the Old Testament is saying. So like we said, uh, Amos, we, Amos, and Amos 9 and Acts 15 we, we just mentioned. So that's an example where, okay, this is happening just like the prophet said. Uh, although the literal fulfillment wasn't there. There was no tabernacle of David, but the essence of what was happening, which is the Gentiles are seeking God, this is a spiritual fulfillment of what the prophet said. Right. So he's pointing back to that. Um, or the New Testament could be explaining further, elaborating further on something mentioned in the Old. So we could look at Joel 2 and Acts 2, where on the day of Pentecost, the experience is actually happening. And Peter is saying, this is what Joel said. Hey, that's what's happening here. It looks very different, but this is that. Okay? Uh, that's what he said. The Holy Spirit is going to move upon us. The Holy Spirit is moving on us. You know? But if you look at the details, yeah, maybe there are variations, but don't get caught down with the variations. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, and it's expanding uh, the understanding of that. That's point number three. Or uh, sometimes something in the New Testament is being supported by what was stated in the Old. So uh, Mark 10 and Genesis 2.24 Jesus is saying, he's teaching about marriage, and he says, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and they two will be one flesh. Okay, So he's teaching about marriage in the New Testament, but he is quoting, obviously, that time they only had the Old Testament. So he's using Genesis 2.24 to show that that same principle concerning marriage is continuing in the New Testament. It's continuing in the New Testament. Same principles continuing, right? So uh, that that is being established. Paul uh, uses a lot of the Old Testament uh, to explain or teach us New Testament truths. Right? In the New Testament, many many actually, the Book of Romans is 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 very powerful because he quotes so much from the old testament in the book of romans almost every chapter almost every chapter in romans he is referencing something in the old testament talking about sin talking about the law talking about abraham talking about righteousness by faith paul is teaching us new testament truth from the old testament scripture so New Testament revelation, of course, it, you know, it's showing us a lot more, giving us more understanding. But in order to bring us that understanding, he is pointing back to the Old Testament and teaching us. Yeah. So uh, New Testament truth is even taught to us. So there are several reasons here uh, that we can see on, uh, on the use, uh, how, and how, how and why the Old Testament is used. In the New Testament, uh, just some guidance here on interpreting Old Testament references in the New Testament. I, I haven't covered all those points here, but when we are interpreting Old Testament references in the New Testament, understand the context, right? Understand what is being talked about in the New Testament. And understand what was what is being referenced from in the Old Testament, and uh, important is see sometimes 
what we read in the New Testament is going to help us better understand the Old Testament. So you come into the New, you read it here, oh, now I can go back to that Old Testament, I can understand it better. But what we must not do is don't put into the mind or put into the Old Testament what is not contained there. Right? We, can, we can understand it better. But remember, when the person writing it, they had a context. There is a literal aspect of it. So that must be retained. Example. You go to the New Testament, Jesus is referred to as the Passover lamb. It's okay. So then you go to Exodus chapter 12. Passover. They did Passover. They took the lamb. They cut it. They took the hyssop. They applied it to the doorposts of the house. Now that was literal. It was a literal lamb. Right? So we shouldn't... Uh, did they know that that lamb was pointing to Jesus? They didn't know. They were just following instruction. Moses said, hey, tonight, death angel is coming. If you want to stay alive, you do this. <laughs> Everybody said, yeah, we want to stay alive. We'll do what you say. <laughs> they followed Moses. That was the mindset. They were not thinking, this is a holy lamb. This is pointing to the Messiah. Oh, this is the blood of the lamb. That's going to wash my... They did not know anything of that. Right? So don't put into, into their minds, oh, all the Jews knew, or the Hebrew people knew, that that lamb was the lamb of the Son of God, of, was the Son of God. Don't do that. They didn't know. So keep the literal as it is. Don't, in the New Testament, we know that that Passover lamb is pointing to Jesus. It's very sacred. It's very holy. But back in that day, in Exodus 12, for them it was a lamb. It was a literal thing they did. They cut it. They collected the blood. They put it there and put, you know, put it on the house. And they, sat, they stood inside saying, okay, Moses told us if we do this, we will be safe. That was it. Okay. But later on we understand the meaning of that. Right? So for us it is very rich. For them, it was a literal thing they did on that night when they went out, when they were brought out of Egypt. Right? And don't read too much into every detail. Like, oh, the hyssop, the hyssop was like a broom. Like, you know, they made those, uh, they took the, the, the parts of that plant, they, like almost like a, not a broom, like a brush. You know, they had to use something. So they used it and they put it. Don't say hyssop is something, or oh, uh, the house had one, two, three. This is a vertical, horizontal beam, and this was the... Some, don't read all those things. In. You know, it was just plain and simple. That's how they did it. right? So be careful not to read into the Old Testament. You understand the Old Testament better. It's so much more powerful, but don't read into it. Okay? So, um, so be careful. But as we said, the New Testament will help us understand the Old Testament better. Right? So i just give an example. We'll look at one example and we'll close. In Isaiah 53 verse 4, in Isaiah 53 verse 4, Isaiah writes, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's verse 5. Okay. So Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. So when you read Isaiah 53, 4, you think, okay, surely he has borne our graves. 
and carried our sorrows. So you think, okay, he carried our, you know, be a lot of our emotional thing, our griefs, our sorrows. But when you come in the New Testament, Matthew 8, 16 and 17, this is the gospel read in Matthew. He's saying about the ministry of Jesus. When on, he's talking about one particular day, he says that evening when the sun was about to set, uh, they brought all the sick people to Jesus, uh, those who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and he healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. And he's quoting Isaiah 53 4. But now he's putting it in a different way. Surely. He has borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases. So, because when you read Isaiah 53, 4, it doesn't seem like that. But now he is saying, Jesus healed the people and he cast out devils to fulfill Isaiah 53, 4. Isaiah is not talking about devils. Isaiah 53, 4. Not talking about devils. Matthew is saying, he did this. He healed and he delivered to fulfill Isaiah 53.4. So then you go back and then you study the Hebrew. Oh, what is the Hebrew saying? Isaiah 53.4. Surely he has borne our griefs. Surely. Hebrew word. And carried our sorrows, makob, the Hebrew word. Choli means sickness, makob means pain. So the Holy Spirit through Matthew is saying, hey, that actually has to do with healing and deliverance. And that is why Jesus is healing and delivering people on the basis of what he's going to do on the cross. Are you understanding? So the New Testament is explaining further for us what the Holy Spirit was saying through Isaiah the prophet. Which may not be very obvious when you just read Isaiah 53, 4, but here Matthew 8, 16, 17 is explaining it to us. This is what Jesus was doing because of the cross. He was delivering people. You're healing people. So we can boldly say today, healing and deliverance is in the cross of Jesus Christ. Because Matthew 8, 16, 17 explains that. So here's one example where the New Testament is opening our eyes to understand better what was given in the Old Testament. Like this, many, many examples, right? You read Hebrews. Hebrews is like a big, full thesis where he's explaining to us so much from the Old Testament, saying this is what it all means, the spiritual meaning of the blood, of the covenant, of the priesthood. All of that is explained in Hebrews, but he's basing it on Old Testament. So a lot of meaning. Right? So to close here. The New Testament will help us understand the Old Testament so much more better. So there's a big connection. But don't, but keep in mind that whatever happened in the Old Testament is literal. It happened the way it was written. Right? Don't read too much meaning into the Old, other than what. The New Testament brings out for us. Otherwise, we will come up with all kinds of strange ideas. Right? And uh, we'll come up with all kinds of funny teaching. So whatever is explained to us in the New Testament, that you apply to the Old Testament. Don't go beyond that. Add things that are not mentioned or given for us. That's the key that I want us to keep in mind. Any questions? Let me see what's any questions from the online students. Any questions? All okay? 
Is it getting heavy or you're fine? All okay? Getting heavy? It's okay? I think we are almost done. Almost done, meaning uh, now we will start to descend the plane. Come for the landing, okay? <laughs> so we went high, we covered many things. Now we'll come and descend. Bring, bring the course uh, to a close. So, um, yeah, from next class, we will just basically bring all the points that we've shared, bring it together, maybe take a few difficult passages, explain those passages, and then we will finish the course. Okay. So the tough parts are covered. Okay. Let's pray and close, and uh, we will dismiss. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for things we could learn today. And we ask that you will help us understand these things. Keep these things in mind as we read the Bible, as we study the Bible. Let the Holy Spirit be our teacher. And may he help us, that the Holy Spirit help us to correctly understand, to correctly interpret and correctly apply the word of God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you. I will. Uh, um, so, Nina's question is there's a lot that has to be kept in mind while interpreting. So, we will do it right as we go along, as we learn. Yep. So, keep these notes handy. Um, as you're studying the scriptures, you know, just use it like a reference, and um, it's uh, you know, uh, as we apply it, uh, uh, it it'll be a useful guide to us uh, to un understand, study, and understand the scriptures. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. I will uh, dismiss today. I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh,